What is up witches and wizards, muggles and nomads, I'm Animagus and today we got all the information in regards to the 12 tasks of Christmas and Harry Potter Wizards Unite and I want to dive in and go over every single step with you as well as some tips and tricks to help you complete the event. So without further ado, let's get started. So to keep tradition with this particular channel, I want to go ahead and read this article through Wizards Unite Hub. Uh, my friend Brita over there wrote that. And so I'm going to go through that, break some things down, give you guys some tips and tricks and all that good stuff and everything that you need to know about this particular event. It will run from December 20th, 2019, all the way to January 7th. 2020 this is actually going to be the longest running event in the history of the game i know that that sounds weird but when you break it down this is going to be an 18 day long event almost three weeks long so i'm going to go ahead and start breaking down each one of these steps and kind of give you guys the information that you'll need in order to succeed in the 12 tasks of christmas from the top of the article it reads Harry Potter Wizards Unite has brought players an early Christmas present. Witches and wizards will have the chance to earn more spellbooks by completing the 12 tasks of Christmas, a new in-game event. These tasks are not sequential, meaning you can complete them in any order. It's not like you have to unlock one, then two, then three, then four, or anything like that. You can do them however you'd like, in whatever order you'd like, and there's no pressure or anything like that. Because again, 18 days is a pretty long time. Most of the rewards are just wizarding XP, but there are some that will give you spellbooks, silver keys, gold, and restricted section books as well. Uh, like I said, December 20th to January 7th, 18 days. Plenty of time to get all of these done. You can do one task per day if you want to and still have six days. So it's again, very low pressure and they wanted to, I believe, just focus on giving some decent rewards out here. So let's go ahead and take a peek at those. So for the 12 tasks of Christmas, starting at the top, the first three are very gift related as they should be with the season, with the holiday and all of that good stuff. Pick up 10 gifts for 100 wizarding XP, send 10 gifts for 100 wizarding XP, and open three gifts for one dark detector. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any information about when they may be expanding the amount that you can open in your daily allowance of gifts or whatever. Hopefully that has changed soon because 10 just seems almost punishing when you have 200 people on your friends list and you can pick up 30 a day, but I regress. Uh, it's, you know, it's not that important for this particular quest. All you have to do is pick up 10, send 10 and open three. In order to pick up gifts, you will have to have an emptier inventory than you might usually have. If you can hold 30 gifts, that means that you need 10 empty slots. So either delete gifts or send them off. If you're not you know, sending off ones that people are wanting, you can go ahead and filter through those. Just make sure that you have 10 empty gift slots and you can get those from inns, greenhouses, and of course, fortresses. Sending gifts is the same way. You can send up to 30. If you have 30 or more, whatever you wanna do there, that's fine. That's completely up to you. But you can send 10 gifts um, and that again, you'll be able to get all that stuff from those POIs that I talked about a second ago. Opening three gifts gives you a dark detector, nothing too crazy there. Dine at ends 30 times or 500 wizarding XP. That is a lot of ends, and I understand that that's a ton of work for some people who may be in rural areas. So if you have a day or a couple of hours where you're like, oh, well, this is gonna be how I get to play the event, I only have a couple of hours to do this thing, then it would definitely be worth your time uh, trying to prioritize these particular tasks. 30 ends, that will definitely give you all 10 of those gifts if you have those empty slots. So make sure that before you go to visit these ends, you have those slots empty. That way you're kind of killing two birds with one stone here. Next for 100 wizarding XP, you can speed through 10 wizarding challenges. What I will probably do is either go to tower one or tower two, Take some oddities, rune stones, try to get some centaur bows. Um, I might try to get a few other foundables that I need for a couple of magical games and sports pages, just like the Gryffindor Quidditch banner that's kind of been holding me up for a really long time. And I, again, will give you 100 wizarding XP. So nothing crazy, but hopefully the reward out of this particular step will be what you get from the rune stones, not necessarily so much as what you get from the 100 XP. Next, it says to complete one wizarding challenge in your highest chamber or two red spellbooks. And of course, we always talk about here how red spellbooks are such a rare commodity and how they're so necessary to success in the game. And so what I would like to advise you to do 
is try to find a group. You can find local Discord groups. You can go to the Wizards Unite community blog that I'll link down below to connect with local players in your area. That will be the easiest way to do this. If you're a solo player, you will have to go to the highest level completed chamber and complete that by yourself. So that's why I'm recommending if you can to play with a group of people and you'll always be able to meet witches and wizards in your area that will help you progress throughout the game more and you might make lifelong friends. You never know. So again, for that one wizarding challenge in your highest chamber, if you can't find a group and you're doing them solo, make sure you have lots of wit sharpening potions. Make sure you have a lot of potent stimulo potions, healing potions, dawdle drafts. If you have to use your focus a lot, those are all of my recommendations. Just brew, brew, brew as much as you possibly can. So you will be able to complete this event because that's going to be kind of a tricky one. And of course, they locked the best reward behind the trickiest task. Perform 100 good spell casts for 500 wizarding XP, perform 30 great spell casts for 1000 wizarding XP, and perform 3 great spell casts in a row for 1000 XP. So that's a total of 2500 uh, just for spell casting. Now, these three great spell casts, they can be great and masterfuls, as well as uh, the great spell cast masterfuls will count towards those, and good spell casts, great and masterfuls will count towards those. So if you hit good, great, or masterful, it'll all scale. That won't be like, oh, you just have to do good ones. It won't ruin your ratio or whatever if you're even keeping up with that of masterfuls, but you will have to perform at least at that base level of 100 good or above spell casts in order to get all of those done next we have brew five potions and use 10 potions those rewards will be one dark detector and 500 wizarding xp now i have said this several times before if you haven't checked out my video on the latest brilliant event quick uh tips and tricks and complete guide and all that stuff you can click on the card above i'll leave that there but I'll say it again just because I feel like it's something that you need to repeat in case you didn't catch it the first time. In order to brew five potions and go ahead and get it out of the way, I always, always fill up my free cauldron with four potions, usually four extimulo potions because they're the shortest to brew, it doesn't take as much time, and I let them brew and I let them sit there. As soon as the event starts, I will go and collect all four of those. In the meantime, I will also have rented a cauldron and just brewed one potion in that cauldron. Now that is usually if I'm trying to get done with something super quick, but with this particular event, you're going to have to brew a potion every single day in order to unlock the daily quest step anyway, in order to get your gold, your 10 gold per day. So honestly, I'm not that worried about it. I wouldn't be that worried about it. You shouldn't be that worried about it. You can brew one potion a day. You can brew one potion every three days if you want and still get this task completed. The only thing is, using 10 potions will take a little bit more time. Again, 18 days in this entire event, one potion per day is what you're asked to do in order to complete the daily quest. So if you complete your daily quests every single day, you have nothing to worry about. You are in no rush and nothing is going to be harmed by you being able to take your time with this. It's not a big deal. You don't have to burn a bunch of resources for this, so my advice for you is if you're a daily quester, you finish that every single time, don't worry about it, hands off, you're gonna get it done with plenty of time to spare. Now for high level foundables, unfortunately the moon just went back and we are no longer with a full moon, so we won't be able to find high werewolf foundables, but you will be able to find urklings, you'll be able to find things like vampires, those are pretty easy uh, to find in general after dark. You can also stack some dark detectors on an inn. If you go up to an inn and you have a few dark detectors, or even if you just have one, you can throw those on an inn and you'll be surprised at how much better dark detectors are now than when they used to be. I made a video forever ago talking about how awesome dark detectors were when in reality they weren't that great. Uh, but now compared to then, it is a world of difference. So I highly recommend going to an inn, stacking three up, you'll get 10 high foundables in no time, definitely uh, before the 30 minute window is up. I don't, I don't see that being an issue at all. So that in conjunction with the current Christmas Calamity Part 2 event, this won't be too tough. It looks tough and it looks scarier. If they had ramped this up to like say return 10 severe foundables or something like that, it would be a lot harder. 
uh, for sure. But I, again, am not concerned with this at all in conjunction with your regular play, finding those oddities that are high foundables and, and being able to recover these brilliant traces. I wouldn't be too worried about it. Again, it's not a super crazy task. They're, they're trying to give you XP and rewards basically for doing this. So the cool news is after you complete all 12 of these tasks, you will earn the bonus rewards, which are as follows. Three silver keys, 80 gold, one dark detector, three spell books, and one restricted section book. So those are all good things that you need. The three spell books are definitely going to be the best reward, in my opinion, next to the three silver keys. I'm very excited to be able to recover keys as well. Anytime you can get keys is awesome because it helps speed through those brilliant events and get rid of those poor keys so you can get on to the next thing. <laughs> now, to be quite honest, this was the first time that I'd actually opened and read this entire article and Brita goes over a lot of the same things that I said. So you know it's good advice when more than one person gives you the same advice. So there's a lot of good stuff in the article as well. If you feel like visiting that, I will again link that down below and all of that good stuff. But that looks like the 12 tasks of Christmas, those quest rewards and those quest steps. Let me know if you have any questions about them and I would be happy to answer those for you guys. That is all that I have for this particular event. Let me know down in the comment section below what your thoughts are about the tasks of Christmas. Do you think this is something that's really fun and really entertaining that'll kind of keep you going into the new year? Or does it just seem like it's a whole lot, especially with the holidays and with the Christmas calamity second part coming up? It's just a lot all at once. So I do wanna let you guys uh, just kind of sound off in the comment section below and let me know what you think about this. I think it's a great source of XP. I think it's really cool that we're gonna get a couple of spell books out of this, as well as, of course, you know, those bonus items that we get when you complete the quest, all of that good stuff. I'm excited for the keys, especially. I've been walking a lot of port keys off, so I need more keys always. So let me know down below what you guys think. And if you did enjoy the content, if you like this guide, and if you got something out of this, or you found something valuable in this video, let me know down below by leaving a thumbs up as well as clicking that red subscribe button and turning on notifications by ringing that bell so you know the next time I produce a piece of wizarding content. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Until then, peace.